Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. In this video, we are going to solve a problem which was asked in Cognizant interview. There were a few questions which were asked in the interview and we are going to mock this interview. So let me be about to you, the candidates. So candidate had around 3.5 years of experience working as a Java developer and apart from Java, he was having knowledge about REST APIs or microservices and Spring Boot. Okay, and when he answered the questions which were asked in the interview, he was selected and he was offered a CTC of 10.5 LPA. So let's get started with the interview. Hey, hi, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. So before starting with the interview, uh, can you please introduce our channel and uh, LinkedIn information? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. This is our YouTube channel and thanks for, uh, subscribing to our channel. Uh, we have reached 25 K subscribers, but we are looking uh, to grow. So I request everyone to please, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also recently we have opened our LinkedIn profile where we are going to post our uh, job updates and the interview experiences. So I also uh, request everyone to join our LinkedIn profile to get, uh, updates from us. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's get started with the interview. So let us consider I have to implement a CRUD operations using Spring Boot. So can you tell me the steps which are required to implement a Spring Boot project and then implement the CRUD operations? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, let's go step by step. Uh, if I want to implement a simple CRUD application, so the first step that I'll uh, do is go to Spring Initializer. So there's a website known as Spring Initializer where you can uh, create your Spring Boot application. So Spring Initializer, let me show the URL uh, to you. So it is start.spring.io. Here you can uh, select the language in which you want to create the project. And also you can select the version of Spring Boot and later you can generate the project. Okay. So also you need to add the dependencies in the project before downloading it. So this is the first step where I'll create my uh, Spring Boot application. The next step is uh, I'll import that application into my Eclipse or IntelliJ, whichever editor you are currently using. Uh, after importing the application, I'll get the package structure of the application. Then I'll start creating uh, packages. So I, I'll have uh, around three layers. The first is the controller layer. I'll create a package for controller. Uh, then there will be a service layer. I'll create a package for service. And then there will be a repository layer or some people call it a DAO, data access layer. Uh, so uh, these are the three layers. Uh, so first I'll uh, create a controller. I'll annotate the controller with uh, annotation at the red rest controller. And uh, for our example, let's take employee uh, object. I want to create employee object. So in that uh, I'll create a method uh, known as create employee. And uh, I'll annotate this method with uh, at the red post mapping. So that will uh, create an object in the database. So from here, I'll call my service method to create the employee. And uh, from there, I'll call my uh, repository method to save the employee object into, into the database. So these are the various layers of my uh, CRUD application. Okay, so you are going to call uh, uh, your database operations from your repository layer. So how do you connect with your database from the repository layer or from this Spring Boot application? Okay, all right. So uh, in my Spring Boot application, uh, either I can use application.properties or I can use application.yaml. So in majority of cases, I used application.properties. Uh, so to connect to our database, uh, we need to configure a few properties. Uh, one of them is uh, the database connection string. Uh, database connection string is uh, the place where your database is actually running. So it is your server name, colon, uh, the port name and then the database name. So this identifies the database. Once we reach the database, I have to provide a username uh, and a password by which I can uh, connect to the database. So I'll configure connection string, I'll configure username, I'll configure password. Okay, fine. Uh, so do you know anything about uh, logging mechanisms in Spring Boot? Mm, yes, so, uh, for example, when we are writing code, uh, then, uh, while the code is executing, we need to uh, we need to get some information about that uh, execution. So for that, we use logs, and uh, uh, there are logging frameworks. For example, uh, log4j, slf4j. So we can use these frameworks uh, in our application for logging. Okay. So what are the different levels of logs? 
Yeah. Oh, there are various levels of logs. Uh, one is info. Uh, one is debug. Then we have warning. Uh, then we have error. So uh, these are the four levels of uh, logging. Okay. So what is the purpose of these levels? Yeah. Uh, so while the program is executing, uh, for example, uh, if you want to track the execution of the program, then ideally uh, we go for info. And when you want to go into deeper level and try to uh, dig a bit more about uh, the execution context, then you go for the debug level. And uh, warning is where you provide warning. For example, your program is executing and is consuming more than 80% uh, of your RAM. In that case, you can uh, uh, log warning into your um, logging framework. And then finally, uh, the error. So for example, you have try block, you have catch block. And if something goes wrong uh, in the try block, you are not able to make connection to some third party uh, application or uh, call some uh, APIs from your try. Then in the catch, uh, you log the error. So error and finally we have fatal. Fatal is where your application will completely stop. Yeah, so these are the various levels. Okay, okay. so do you have any experience on design patterns or specifically do you know solid principles? Mm, yeah, so I know about solid principle. Uh, so solid stands for, uh, there are various, uh, in this acronym, each character uh, has a specific meaning. Uh, for example, solid stands, uh, S stands for single responsibility principle, O is for open close, uh, then L is for list course, I is for interface segregation, and D is for uh, dependency injection. So you said S and for single responsibility principle. So what is meant by single responsibility principle? Oh, perfect. So I'll uh, try to give uh, an example. Single responsibility is each class should have only one and one responsibility. For example, uh, let's try uh, to create a class known as a book. And uh, in book, uh, we have a method, for example, print. And uh, it prints a string. Okay. And uh, so I'll do this out, print. So I'll make this uh, as public void, okay? And string str. So let's try to print uh, str. And this uh, book class also has responsibility to send email, okay? So you can see there are two responsibilities. One is uh, printing and one is sending email. So this book is performing two responsibilities. So it is not fitting into a single responsibility principle, which is each class should have only one responsibility, one and only one responsibility. So I can uh, I cannot send email from the book. For this, I need to uh, write a new class, for example, email. And from that class, I can go and uh, do the email related functionality. So that's what uh, the single responsibility principle is. Only one responsibility per class. Okay, so what about the open and closed principle? Okay, so open and uh, closed principle, all right. So your code should be open for extension, but it should be uh, closed for modification. So let's take an example. Uh, for example, uh, class, uh, there is a calculator class. Okay, uh, I'll make this as interface, uh, I calculator. And uh, I'll do public void um, calculate. So this is my uh, calculate method. Okay. And uh, public void. So this is uh, interface. Okay. Uh, I calculator. Uh, tomorrow I want to create a, a normal calculator. So I create a normal calculator. All right. Uh, so this has to implement uh, our I calculator. I calculator and then we have to override the method uh, which is your calculate okay so i'll print here this is out uh, normal calculator normal calculator uh, now tomorrow uh, for example if uh, the instead of normal calculator i get the requirement of scientific calculator then I should not come here and uh, write a if condition uh, if, uh, for example, calculator is scientific calculator, something of this sort. Instead of doing this, I should be able to create a new class. So this is closed for modification and open for extension. So what I'll do, I'll um, create a new class and here I'll make it scientific calculator. 
and this will implement your eye calculator. Or uh, instead of implementing eye calculator, what I can do, uh, this will extend your uh, normal calculator. Okay, so after extending normal calculator, I'll override uh, the calculate method in my scientific calculator. So what we have done here, uh, instead of uh, instead of modifying the calculate normal calculator code, we have extended normal calculator and we have provided the functionality uh, here in a new class. So this is uh, open for extension and closed for modification. Okay, good. So can you tell me what is this course substitute principle? Yeah, Lis Lisco substitute principle. Uh, I won't write code for this, but I'll uh, try to explain in um, comment. So while um, coding, what we do, every every method has a written type. For example, uh, there's a method known as public uh, A and uh, for example, uh, calculate. Okay. So now uh, A is a class. So A is a type. Okay. Now tomorrow what I do, I just go ahead and uh, make a class B which extends from A. Okay. So now B is a subtype of A. Right. So uh, I as a developer should have to make sure that wherever I can return A, uh, so similarly I can return B. So calculate method, this should be the valid representation uh, for my code. So wherever I can return A, I should be able to return B. This should not give me any error or this should not add any additional responsibilities in class B. So that is Lisco substitution principle. Okay, so you are saying that the subtype should be responsible or should be able to replace or substitute the parent type. Is it yeah, correct? Yeah, that is right. Okay, so okay, so that is fine about this. So can you tell me what is uh, method overloading in Java? Uh, yeah, method overloading is in Java is uh, initially we write wrote a book um, class. Uh, there we have print method. For example, so what I do, I create one more print. And then instead of a uh, uh, string, I can do integer um, int and then print, for example, int. Okay. And then here I can do int. Uh, so this is uh, any, for example, each. Right. Uh, this is overloading where we have two methods with the same name, but uh, different data type. Okay, so can you call this method from the main method? You can write one more main, uh, class on inside that. You can write a main method and call this method with a null parameter. What will be the output? Can you tell me? Okay, so let me create, uh, I'll create a driver class, okay, with a main method. And there we have- You can create a class, but uh, don't call the main uh, the uh, method pro with null value. Just before calling that method, you need to tell me what would be the output. Okay, so with the null value, you want to call it with the null value. Here we have a string, here we have integer. So it will give me a compiler error because uh, there are two types. So this will be ambiguous call. Okay, can you try now? Yeah, so let me try. I will make a book. Book equal to new. Uh, book and uh, book dot print so null okay so it is giving me error because uh, it does not know whether to call string or integer because null does not have type okay now can you comment the line number five okay so comment line number and five. go back to your book class yeah and instead of string can you make it object Mm, instead of string, I want to make it object. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell me if I try to call the print method again from the main method, what will be the output? Uh, so this time it will call um, integer. Uh, why? Because integer is uh, a specific type of object. So this object class and then integer uh, extends my object class. Okay, so you mean uh, this is the most specific types. Can you try now? Yeah. You can uncomment the line number five. Yeah. Okay, and run the method.
Oh, print int null. Okay, perfect. Uh, can you tell me what are the different types of exceptions which are available in Java? Mm, there are uh, various types of exceptions. One is checked exception and uh, the other one is unchecked exception. We also call okay. it uh, compile time exception and runtime exception. So what is the difference between this compile time exception and the runtime exception? Can you give me an example of both? Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, in the compile time exception, uh, we have to handle this exception uh, when we are writing the code and the runtime exceptions are thrown due to some logical error. So let me take an example here. Uh, for example, null pointer exception is a logical problem. So it is a runtime exception and file not found exception uh, is a compile time exception. So we have to handle whenever we are doing some operation uh, which will uh, which will result in file not found, then we have to uh, write our, uh, for example, try block and uh, then we have to write catch block and within catch we have to do a uh, file not found exception here we have to define file not found exception okay so you are going to use try and catch to handle the exceptions in java correct, correct. okay so can you write some code uh, in try block that will generate an exception and you are going to handle it in catch block so how do you handle it can you show me let us consider you are writing uh a plus b and then you have to calculate the sum okay uh so i should write a new method for this uh you can utilize same or whatever you want yeah so let me do okay um i'll do mm -hmm. integer a uh equal to five comma uh, b equal to three that is my first thing and then um and teacher c equal to uh that's what you want to do a plus b uh instead of a plus b can you make it a divided by b a divided by b okay so i made it yeah. a divided by b and then uh what i'll do so i'll i'll also do sys out so that uh we'll know what is happening in try and then in catch i'll do sys out in catch and then i'll also do finally Finally, is where all the uh, release operation happens. So if you're utilizing any resources, you can also release the resources. Finally, any cleanup activity you know, in finally. Okay, so it's A by B, uh, I'll do sys out C. Okay, so uh, let me take this as double if I can, or I'll make it uh, long. Let it be int. So that is fine and this will be six and this will be three now let me run this you know, may i run this program yes we can run it yeah so in try and then two and then in finally and you are in finally let us consider now you modify the value of b such that it will throw an exception let us consider to make it as a zero okay you want to make and it will throw a divide by zero exception right Correct, correct. Okay, so how do you handle this exception or uh, how the blocks will get executed? Can you tell me? Okay, so now what will happen now? Uh, try will get executed. Uh, this statement will ex get ex executed, and here the exception will occur, and line number 10 will get executed. So try, then catch, and then finally. Okay, so finally is getting executed irrespective of exception or not exception, right? Correct. So can I avoid uh, the execution of finally block? Uh, yes, we can avoid execution of finally block. How can we do that? Uh, whenever I do system dot um, exit either from um, the try block or from the catch block, then um, finally will be not executed. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so I don't have any more questions. Do you have any question for me? Uh, no, I don't have any uh, questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So guys, if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. That will motivate us to create more videos like this. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.